master surveillance mindset on Northwest Digital News. And Darren Fredrickson has joined us on the on the screen, left to right. Darren Fredrickson, Kevin Hunter, and Kyle Torgerson making all the tech happen here on the show. And we have a great show for you guys today. We're going to talk about uh, purse snatching and share with you some footage shot undercover somewhere in the United States. Darren Fredrickson, for people who are are, are unaware, has done been involved in training federal, state, and local law enforcement officers from all around the United States. And uh, so we're going to share with you a, a piece of footage shot somewhere in the U.S. We're not going to tell more than that. Shot somewhere in the U.S., but this is a takedown of somebody who is snatching purses. And the extent that this particular situation or this character went through to do this, I don't think a lot of people would realize this could even happen. Yeah, criminals do their homework, just like uh, our last episode. I said that um, investigators and surveillance do their homework. And again, they're, they're opportunists. And so they look for the easiest place to find their target. They look for the easiest targets and because they want to make their job easier as well. Mm -hmm. So in this situation uh, with purse snatches, where would your suspects go if, if they've done their homework? Well, they go wherever there's going to be shoppers where and it's primarily women, obviously, that they're targeting and they prefer uh, older women or, or even elderly women just because they're easier targets. So if you think about it midday, uh, where would a, a purse snatcher go? Well, a grocery store is real common because grocery store the, there's the shoppers come in and out and they they actually oftentimes profile their victim before they even go into the store and so even before we get to the purse snatch think about going to the grocery store and going into the grocery store and the woman has their purse and there's a there's a few different tactics that that purse snatchers will use and purse snatching is kind of an overall term of snatching a purse off of the shoulder but even think about in the grocery store where the purse is sitting in a cart and uh, oftentimes women shoppers will leave their purse and do their shopping and we follow groups that have done that where they've come they've gone in and actually just targeted open purses or purses and they don't usually grab the whole purse in case you thought that they just grabbed the purse and run they they do do that oftentimes but if the purse is gone the the victim's going to realize immediately like my purse is gone and report it and then obviously try shutting off credit cards most suspects aren't necessarily looking for cash in purses. They're looking for credit cards that they can, they can go out and quickly start making purchases. And so a lot of times they'll just grab the wallet out. Now, obviously when the victim gets to the register and realizes my wallet's gone, then they're gonna realize the, the, um, their, their credit cards were taken and cash was taken and they'll start canceling them. But you would be amazed at how fast these, these suspects can get a wallet and use credit cards really fast to get uh, as much as they can off that card before it gets shut down. A lot of precious so, time is going by after they stole that wallet before the victim realizes it's gone. Absolutely, just like locker rooms, when um, locker rooms get burglarized at gyms, a mm -hmm. lot of times they'll just take one card out of that wallet and use that card because if you, again, you come back to your locker and the whole wallet's gone, you're gonna report everything stolen right away but it gives them time. And that's what they're doing is buying time. Mm -hmm. So they'll just take that one card out and use that before the victim finds out their wallets. You know, the card's gone from their wallet. Yeah, yeah, this can happen at a grocery store. It could happen, you know, at a restaurant where maybe the woman puts the purse on the end of her bench and isn't thinking about it or whatever. There's, there's a lot of different places where it can happen. This particular situation where the individual targets suspects and then actually follows them home. Mm -hmm. That's where this particular one goes. And uh, I, I think if this doesn't scare the crap out of somebody, holy cow. Now, now, now they not only have identified you as a victim, but now they know where you live too. Yeah, absolutely. So when you have purse snatching, a lot of them occur in parking lots, right? And we've worked mm -hmm. those groups where, uh, and usually they work in teams. And so there'll be a distraction and then somebody will grab the purse and run. And we can talk at the end of this, about ways you can prevent your purse from being snatched as well. But um, it, when it happens in a parking lot, there's a lot of witnesses, there's camera systems off, oftentimes where it'll record the theft. Mm -hmm. And so 
think about if you're a suspect and you're like, well, this is kind of, uh, I'm exposed here. There's a lot of cameras. There's a lot of people. My risk has gone up because there's, there's just so much commotion. Even this at nighttime, there's a lot of light in the parking lot. Oh, sure. So this suspect actually came up with a strategy of, I'm going to go to where it's secluded. There's no witnesses and snatch purses where I'm kind of in an environment that I feel pretty protected. And so he would actually find his target or his mark. They call it a mark. He'd find his mark and then follow this mark home. And again, this was primarily elderly people with a handicap placard. Every one of them had a handicap placard hanging from the rear view mirror or a wheelchair plate or handicap plate. Mm -hmm. And he would follow them home. And then once they got home, then when they came out of their car with their purse, he would just run up and grab that purse and then run back to his car and flee. Now, the unfortunate thing with a purse snatch, and, and especially with this suspect here, is we had to actually allow him to do his crime. Uh, because if he ran up and we, we apprehended him before he grabbed the purse, there's no crime, right? Mm -hmm. um, even going in, he would go into houses after the victim and grab the purse and run out. Well, if you ran into a house and didn't grab the purse, it's just a trespass. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you could push burglary, right? Committing with the intent to commit a theft therein. We actually had to allow him to go complete his crime, mm -hmm. which a lot of us were really leery about because, as I mentioned, two of his victims had fallen over after the purse snatch, broke their hip, and later died because of the injuries. Oh, wow. So we had to allow him to, to complete his crime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so how did you become aware that this is what he was doing, that he was actually following victims home? How, what, what tipped you off that this was happening? So we were supporting a robbery detective and then even homicide detectives because the, the MO or the method of operation or modus operandi um, was similar with the homicide victims of those two elderly people that had died during the purse snatch. Mm -hmm. And then robbery having incidents of being reported and so at some point they were able to identify an individual who um, was recently released from prison who had a crack cocaine addiction. And there was a, a unit that started doing surveillance on them. And then after about a week, they said, we think this is our target. So we brought in another surveillance team, actually I think two more surveillance teams and aircraft and started following him. And as soon as he started going to the, it was actually a hometown buffet mm -hmm. looking for his victims then and following away, we knew right away, like this is our guy, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So you were part of this surveillance uh, operation and you shot some video of what actually happened. What, what do you wanna share before we roll this video and let our audience see what, what you shot? So in case you didn't see the first uh, episode, this, this suspect was basically looking for his victims, following him home. So what we would do as a strategy, as soon as he started following somebody, then we'd run the license plate quickly and find out where this victim lived. And usually, um, you know, these were elderly victims and usually elderly people, their addresses are pretty solid. Mm -hmm. So we'd find out quickly where they lived, set a, whoever was the closest would get ahead of the suspect and the victim, set up on the house and put it under surveillance waiting for the victim to come home. And so that's what we did. And as the video rolls, you'll see where I'm set up on a, on a victim that he ended up passing on, and we can explain that as we're showing the video. Okay, go ahead and roll the roll the video, and if at any pl place you want us to pause so you can explain what people have just seen, uh, feel free. Go ahead and roll the sure. video, Kyle. So this I'm actually set up. This is a little townhouse community, and the suspect just drove by right now. He like couldn't see much of the car. This is our victim right here. And I'm set up across in a driveway. I just grab driveways for short term surveillance because there's nowhere I can set up on the street here and watch this victim to see what happens. So there she pulled into her driveway and here comes our suspect. I can hear his car and there he goes. Yep. We have aircraft overhead. I'm set up in a perfect eye to watch this crime go down. But little did we know that her daughter met her at the house and her daughter's actually parked to the right here. Mm -hmm. And uh, the suspect saw somebody was there. And so again, he saw that there was a witness. He didn't know it was the daughter of this woman. And so he ended up leaving. So I'm just still here hiding behind my van. Go ahead and pause the video and for a second, Kyle. 
Well, this is just kind of a, um, a general observation really for people in really any kind of setting is that when you portray weakness, you right away attract people with the mindset of these criminals and or bullies is they're looking for people who are weak, who are unprepared. Um, and, and so even the daughter showing up, you might add, you know, think from a law enforcement standpoint or somebody who is, you know, this big burly going, what, what, what was the girl going to do? Well, she's another set of eyes. And that alone makes the lady less of a victim or, or less weak in that, in, in the bully's eyes. So anyhow, go ahead and roll. Yep, so here's another victim, and we're following him from the from the restaurant. Okay, now up here, you're going to see him run. It's there, There's already a unit set up, and so I'm just staging down the street because there's no sense pulling in. So there's him driving. The victim's already pulled into the driveway, and he's parking across the street, and you'll just see a little blur of him running across the street as I zoom in. And then you can hear the detectives on scene report what he's doing. There he goes. Yep. So here we're rolling up. There's there's two detectives right there. We're all just staging out because we have enough units set up, as you'll soon see. Mm hmm so they were just hiding in bushes hiding behind cars pause right here Kyle so there you see the victim her trunks open she had grow she had actually uh, gone grocery shopping and I believe this victim came from the grocery store mm -hmm. and there she has her trunk open and it's a perfect opportunity he actually ran in and I believe he ran into the house on this one and grabbed her purse. And then as he ran out, he met, he met a wall of undercovers. <laughs> so they, you, we're far enough out, Kyle, and this is blurred enough. Go ahead and, and raise that back screen there just a little bit so people can see that there is, yeah, there's a swarm of people on top of this guy in the ground. <laughs> so, yeah, he, he got exactly what he deserved. But, wow, what a setup you guys had to do to catch this guy yeah and we had we had set up probably two or three times before this but again something murphy got in his way and murphy <laughs> wasn't good to him and he just didn't feel right about it mm -hmm. and so this is a really good demonstration though of of a suspect like you said looking for that right victim looking for the right opportunity the right environment where he felt like he could maximize his success of getting away with a crime and anything that got in the way, he said, he called it off. He said, let's call this off to himself. He was, he operated solo. Mm -hmm. And then he just went and picked his, his next victim and mm -hmm. waited for the optimum environment to do his crime. Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah. that's how they operate. Um, a, a lot of them aren't, like you said, this sophisticated. Most of them will just walk a parking lot and grab a purse. Somebody will distract. Mm -hmm. and and distract the person and then they'll grab the purse out of a cart or off the arm but if you're portraying yourself as a weak victim you also then for somebody like this guy who had a different way of snatching the purse was actually at the location you are also inadvertently inviting that person to follow you home and when i say like how how scary is that you know you think about families where you know th these kinds of things are happening out there and you know, I had a elderly mother who just actually passed away a couple of years ago, but, um, you know, I could think about her being somewhere in public and some, you know, a dirt ball like this guy following her to her house. I mean, how, how scary is that? And when you mentioned that a, a few of these victims um, in the early part of this, or at least ma matched the uh, MO, as you said, did, did you ever find out for sure that this was the guy who led to the, 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 two previous ladies who actually died because of this situation were, were you able to pin that on him no there was there wasn't enough evidence the witnesses weren't able to pick him out of a out of a photo lineup otherwise known as like a six pack and and a lot of that is because of everything that was going on yep with uh the fear the shock and everything and maybe eyesight and just memory and 
um, ethnicity plays a part of it where it was just harder to identify this person based on his race. Mm -hmm. So all those things are factors that, because the only evidence we had was witness evidence. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, they weren't able to, to pin those homicides, but it was based on everything. It was pretty clear it was him. And that's why we put so much energy into this individual here to get him uh, apprehended. And, you know, when you think about the fact that he's following them home and this is a neighborhood where there's nobody driving around, that's where all this situational awareness comes in, whether you're in a parking lot and paying attention to what's going on around you or whether you're being followed home. And uh, we could do a, a future show on how to know if you're being followed. There's very easy things to do to detect if you're being followed by somebody. And in this situation, he parked right across the street and she easily could have seen that he parked there. Maybe she was in the house. I'm not sure, but, um, that situational awareness prevents this. You know? Yeah. We have a viewer who posted a comment, uh, says, she says, I was attacked in a purse snatch twice. This was at, uh, mall of America, which is in the Minneapolis mm -hmm. St. Paul area, uh, was rammed and grabbed by a very large guy was in a group of six, including two kids. That's a pretty ballsy well, act right there, man. No, that is. And uh, that's most of these individuals that do purse snatchers. Everyone I worked, they're, they're drug addicts. They are looking to get money for their next fix. And so the more desperate they are to get the money for their next fix, the more desperate means they're going to take to do it. And so a, a group of six with children and, and rammed like rammed by a person or rammed mm -hmm. in a vehicle. That's what it sounds like, was rammed by the individual and grabbed by them. Wow, okay. Yeah, no, it's, the more desperate they are, the more desperate, uh, the more chance they're gonna take and the, the, they're gonna do what they need to do to get it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, having having the confidence of just, and, and we can talk about it more in another show uh, or maybe even touch on it here, but just making eye contact and having the confidence and just being aware. Like mm -hmm. when I do surveillance, I'm a people watcher mm -hmm. just because that's what I, what I do. And you can just see people that would be a good victim and people that exude, exude the confidence that you're just going to pass on them. And a lot of that just can come through having confidence in the way you, you hold yourself in that eye contact. And it's really simple stuff, but people just don't do it. Mm -hmm. And the number one thing they don't do is pay attention to what's going on. Because mm -hmm. how many times you hear all of a sudden and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, well, it wasn't all of a sudden. It's just that it was all of a sudden to you, but it was there. You could have seen all the cues and the indicators that something was happening. Mm -hmm. Again, it's just being aware of what's going on. Yeah. Absolutely. Great observation. So um, suggestions for people who are either been a victim of this or, you know, trying to make sure that they don't become a victim of a uh, purse snatcher suggestions that you'd have having watched a lot of people do this to victims, you know, in various places around the United States, what are your suggestions? So with purses with women, uh, first thing I made a couple notes here that with purses, if they're going to grab them off your shoulder, um, the, the, the cross bag or the cross strap is really good. Mm -hmm. Um, always have your purse clasp clasped or zipped shut so they can't gra grab into it. Cause some, a lot of suspects, if the purse is open, all they want is a wallet. They don't want the purse necessarily. They just want the wallet. So if they can just grab that, um, then if you have it closed up, they're not able to grab that. Just like in a grocery store, keep it closed up. Keep it on your person. Uh, I recommend not having a lot of valuables in your purse. Like your wallet should be separate from your purse. Mm -hmm. And really, you don't need to bring your whole purse into a grocery store necessarily. Just grab the cards you need, put them in your pocket. You don't need your whole purse. Just grab those cards and if they're on your person you don't even have a purse to expose yourself to some of these individuals will cut, actually cut the strap they'll have a knife or a cutter and they'll just cut the strap and pull it so a thicker strap on a purse will help and then a lot of them work in pairs so if, if somebody's talking to you pay attention to who they're with or who might be around because they'll distract mm -hmm. distraction has been a method forever and ever and ever on distracting somebody. That's what how musicians work or, or uh, magicians. They distract you with other things with talking while they're doing their 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 sleight of hand. Mm -hmm. So those are things that I would recommend um, at least just right off hand on preventing the purse snatch. But aside from what you do with the purse, you, you just pay attention. 
It's, mm -hmm. we, we're, all these are going to come back to situational awareness and being aware of what's going on around you. Because like I said, that's what vic, uh, suspects are looking for is an easy target. So if you're not paying attention and you, you're holding yourself as like a victim, and I'll bring back like just having a higher level of fitness and training and that helps your posture. Mm -hmm. Everything is posture, confidence, making eye contact. Mm -hmm. So I hope those help. And uh, it's it's it will help if you do mm -hmm. it. It's developing habits. And that's what everything comes back to is developing safety habits mm -hmm. that you just do and you don't even think about. You know, when you when you talk about personal fitness, and I think I asked you this even on your last our last show, like how important is personal fitness been to your role? as a um, undercover um, surveillance. Well, to women that are out there, I mean, we talk about all the different health benefits and that sort of thing, but fitness is actually a safety issue as well. And, you know, you mentioned about being a, a people watcher. I, I notice and pay attention to people a lot, and it is really super obvious when a either male or female walks in front of you and somebody who's and, and I'm not going to be talking about somebody who is ripped like a, a world-class weightlifter. I'm just talking about somebody who's really solid, who's been taking care of themselves, who are toned. It is, it is super obvious. When they walk by, you're just like, hey, th there, there's somebody in shape. And uh, I could totally understand why that person would not be a target for somebody who's looking for an easy pick. Because it's not going to be. It's not going to be an easy pick. It doesn't. It just, and, and like I mentioned before, it's not just the size and the strength of fighting an assailant. There's a time to fight an assailant, mm -hmm. but not. It's not when they're looking for your your purse or they want your car because they're gonna they're carjacking you. Uh, a lot of times, they'll actually take the purse and take the car. And mm -hmm. in, in those situations, you you don't want to fight. I mean, that's mm -hmm. you just property can be replaced. Last mm -hmm. thing you want them to do is hit you and hurt you, and so let them take it. But um, but just training and having that confidence that that comes with it and mm -hmm. and i say posture believe it or not posture is so important and you get that from training so you know it's not all about being super super fit and all that but all it's taking care of yourself and and uh mentally and physically and mm -hmm. that'll that'll create and exude that confidence that will prevent a suspect from picking you because there's a lot of targets out there and that's what they're doing they're just looking for easy ones look at look at how the animal kingdom works right mm -hmm. what, what do predators go after they go after the young and the mm -hmm. weak you have a yep. big herd and they're looking for the stragglers and the easy targets mm -hmm. they don't want to go in there and go after that the big strong leader of the pack how to not be a victim um, how important is that well we have tons and tons of great content coming up on uh, upcoming shows here on Master Surveillance Mindset. Thanks to everybody who joined us here on the broadcast from Twitch TV, from Patreon, from YouTube, and Facebook. Love to see all the uh, comments and whatnot that show up uh, on the stream. So thanks for all of that. And um, special thanks to Darren Fredrickson for all the great content here on Master Surveillance uh, Mindset. On behalf of myself, Kevin Hunter, and Kyle Torgerson, and of course our guest host, Darren Fredrickson. Until next time, take care.